Hello 7th graders and welcome to Math Weekly number 5. The focus skill for this Math Weekly will be simple theoretical probability and experimental probability. So let's first begin by defining probability. Probability is a measure of how likely something is to happen. In your own words, it's the chances of something actually happening. You have a lot of experience with probability, especially with the weather. Today there's a 30% chance of rain, or today there's a 0% chance of rain. You know that probability is a measure of how likely something is to happen. Probability ranges from 0, which means impossible or never capable of happening, to one which means certain or happening every single time. So for example, if I were rolling a number cube and I said, um, what's the chances of you getting a 10? You would say zero, it's impossible. If I said, what's the probability that you get a number one, two, three, four, five, or six? You would say that's certain because those are all the numbers on the dice. Everything in between ranges from impossible to certain, such as unlikely and even chance or likely. There are two types of probability. The first is theoretical probability. Theoretical probability is what you think will happen. When you hear those weather forecasts, they are thinking about what may happen with the weather. Today we think there is a 30% chance of rain. Today we think there's a 0% chance of rain. We think that it's impossible. It is always calculated by the number of ways the event can happen over the total number of outcomes in the sample space. Notice this is a fraction, part of the total then this fraction can be converted to a decimal or a percent as an equivalent value. Let's look at some examples that deal with a normal number cube with six sides. So what is the probability of rolling a four? Well, how many ways can you get a four with a dice? There's only one number four, so that's one out of six. Like I said, you can divide this to get, I'm just getting us a calculator here to save time. You can divide one by six to get a decimal. So one divided by six is 0 0.166 or 0 0.17. So there'll be about a 17% chance of you rolling a four. Let's look at another example. What is the probability of rolling an even number? Well, how many even numbers are on the dice? There are one, two, three. So there's a three out of six chance of rolling an even number. Three six is a, is a non-simplified fraction, so we can reduce that by three to get one half. There's a one half chance if you divide one by two, in case you didn't know, you will get 0.5, which is the same as 0.50. which is 50%. There is a 50% chance that you will roll an even number. Let's try one more. What is the probability of rolling a number greater than two? Well, is two greater than two? No, two is the same as two. Three is greater than two, four is greater than two, five is greater than two, six is greater than two. So there are four options greater than two out of six Again, this will reduce by two to give us two thirds. If you divide two thirds, you'll get 0.66 repeating or 0.67. So that'd be a 67% chance of rolling a number greater than two. That is theoretical probability, what you think will happen. The other type is experimental probability. Experimental probability is what has actually happened. You don't just think about what hap would happen if you rolled a dice, you actually pick one up and roll it. To calculate experimental probability, you or someone else must have completed an experiment. Once it's completed, it is always calculated by the number of times the event occurred over the total number of trials. So if I rolled the dice 10 times, that would be the number of trials, 
And if I got a 2 5 times, that'd be 5 out of 10. I got 2 5 times out of 10. So it's just the same as theoretical in the sense that you get a fraction. It's just where you get the numbers from that's different. Theoretical is what you think will happen. Experimental is what has actually happened. So let's do an experimental probability example. Sarah rolled a dice 60 times. So we know that there's 60 numbers here. The following occurred. She got a 1 12 times, a 2 13 times, a 3 15 times, a 4 5 times, a 5 8 times, and 6 7 times. So what is the experimental probability of rolling a 1? Well, how many times did Sarah get a 1? Sarah got a 1 12 times out of 60. If you reduce that, which they both divide by 12, you get 1 fifth. There's a 1 in 5 chance of rolling a 1. And you could convert that to a decimal or percent if you wanted to. Sorry, I didn't mean to erase that. Let me undo that. There we go. Let's look at what's the probability of rolling a 4. Well, how many 4s got rolled? 5 times a 4 was rolled out of 60. Reduce that by 5 and we get 1 12th. A 4 happened 1 12th of the time. Let's try one more example. What is the probability of rolling a number greater than 4? Well, the numbers greater than 4 are 5 and 6. They happened 8 and 7 times. If we add those together, that's 15 times out of 60. 15 and 60 can both reduce by 15 to get 1 fourth. There's a 1 fourth chance of rolling a number greater than 4 in this experiment. So let's summarize what you've learned. You've learned there are two types of probability. Theoretical, which is thinking about probability, and experimental, which is testing probability.